Now let's see about the memory interfacing. This part of memory interfacing is actually dealing about how are we going to connect various parts of the memory or various types of the memory, one to the I.O. devices and other to the CPU. And this one comes under the part of computer organization. So if you look at organization and architecture, the main difference between organization and architecture is in case of organization, we are going to deal with how we are going to connect various parts of the computer and make them work. So in case of architecture, we deal with how to make use of it effectively, right? For example, if you are talking about pipelining, that comes under architecture. If you are type, connect, type, talking about just connecting the parts, it comes under organization. So this part comes under organization. Now let's see why we need the memory at first. So whenever you try to give any input, which is nothing but a program, that will be present in a memory and that memory has to be, that program has to be given to CPU, right? Now if you see CPU, generally the speed of CPU will be given in MIPS, which means million instructions per second. So the meaning of MIPS is that the CPU can execute 1 million instructions in one second million instructions per second means 1 million instructions per second now the problem is when it is able to process those many instructions in one second will you be really be able to give the instructions to it at that rate that is the main issue now how are you going to give the input to the CPU is mainly through memory but then the problem with memory is its speed is less compared to the CPU got it now there are various types of memories one is the cheapest memory available which is hard disk if you try to put the data in the hard disk and if you ask cpu to execute the program from the hard disk then what happens is even though cpu is able to you know execute it very fast it will it will be troubled because of the slow speed of the uh, you know our secondary memory which means our secondary memory is going to be a kind of bottleneck then what should we do we should place the data in a speed high speed memory like main memory still main memory speed is not you know as good compared to the uh, you know uh, cpu therefore you should go for higher speed memory that is cache so see this that is how we are going to organize it now we have secondary memory and then main memory and then cache and then cpu now we are connecting cpu directly to the cache and sometimes directly to the main memory cache and main memory are somehow faster compared to the secondary memory but secondary memory is very slow that is why we never <coughs> we never try to directly you know access a program from the secondary memory before we try to fetch it into main memory and from main memory maybe we'll directly take it here or we take it through this all right now you might get a question that if cache is very fast why don't we go for only cache why should we go for main memory and auxiliary memory the problem is it is really costly and also it is not permanent which means you cannot store it is a volatile memory unlike secondary memory it is a volatile memory and second thing is it is really costly so if you increase the size of the cache your entire computer system is going to cost you very high so we are going to have a trade-off right so we have low speed memory and then medium speed and then high speed memory got it okay now if you see this we have already discussed in operating system how to deal with the transfer of data between secondary memory and main memory why can't i store everything in the main memory again main memory is not you know uh, my memory is volatile memory and second thing is it is costly therefore we are going to have only some main memory but everything is stored in secondary and as and when we require a program we are going to load it right then it becomes a process so everything about this we dealt with in operating system right so how do you uh, you know move the data from here to here by using pages by using the concept of paging segmentation and segmented paging we discussed everything there right and also virtual memory concept also has been used right so everything has been discussed there okay and coming to how we move the data between main memory and caching we discussed in co in the cache memory right so we are going to use something called as blocks or words right so here we are going to use pages that is the terminology being used okay and when we map some data from main memory to 
caching it is called cache mapping right when we map some data from here to here it is called as main memory mapping or virtual memory mapping got it okay now we might have one more level of memory which is uh, relatively less but very fast that is called as resistors so resistors is also a type of memory which is present inside the uh, you know cpu so whenever you have a program first we move that program into the main memory that is when it is going to become the process and from that process in general we move a part of it to the cache as and when it is required and from that cache we are going to take instruction by instruction and get it into resistors and then execute it got it so by and you know depending on the amount you are willing to invest in it into the computer system you can choose about how much size of depending on the cost you are willing to invest into your computer system you can choose how much you want to buy cache and how much you want to buy main memory and how much you want to buy this so in the next video we shall see how to use the cost and i mean if what is the cost of each one and how much you can get within the budget okay bye hi if you are planning to do masters then doing masters abroad is better than doing masters in india i'll give you all the reasons so first reason is out of 1 lakh students who take gate every year there are only 500 seats in old iits so all the iits put together have a acceptance rate of 0.5% and iits universities better than iits they have very good acceptance rate like 30% 40% but all the iits put together have a acceptance rate of 0.5% and if you are working hard to get into iit bombay iit bombay's ranking is 177 and IIT Roorkee's ranking is 400. If you are happy to get into IIT Roorkee, then getting into universities better than IIT Roorkee is easier compared to getting into IIT Roorkee. And looking at the salaries for computer science, of, uh, for software jobs, if you have done your masters in computer science in US, the salaries are ranging from 80 lakhs per year to 1.2 crore per year. So even if you take an average of 1 crore per year, your savings will be much higher than the salaries in India. After taxes and your cost of living, you can easily save 40 to 50 lakhs uh, per year. And in India, the maximum jobs that you get is around 30 lakhs. So your savings will be much greater than the salaries in India. And these are all the services that we provide. University shortlisting. So depending on your profile, we will shortlist what are the universities that you have to apply. And statement of purpose building and then LOR guidance and GRE and English test assistance and education loan assistance. So you don't have to have any collateral, which, which means without any security, now you can get education loan. Getting education loan is very simple these days. And whatever the amount fee, the amount of uh, fee that you have, you have a range of uh, universities. You can apply for 10 lakh universities, 20 lakh universities or 50 lakh universities. But whatever it is, you are going to get complete education loan and you can pay off your education loan in one year after you, getting it, after you get a job. And then we do visa assistance, mock visa interviews and then connecting with the university alumni. So now you might ask why we should join Game of Visas. So the answer is we have 90% success rate, 99% success rate. And these are all the destinations that we guide the students to. So we guide students to any country that you want to go. So now it is not just USA. We guide to UK, Germany, Australia, Canada. So we guide, we guide students to all the countries. We work with all the destinations. And if you are interested in going abroad, you have to just drop us a message on this WhatsApp number 9494 Okay, thank you.